Subtracting mixed fractions. You might already know how to do this, but I'm gonna let you know we have a twist. Dun dun dun! Sometimes we have to regroup our fractions in order to actually subtract. Now this doesn't come to us as a surprise with regular whole numbers because we do have to borrow and regroup. We borrow when, and regroup when our second number is actually greater than our first number, the number we're subtracting from. Well, the same thing sometimes often happens with fractions. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In this particular fraction problem, I'm actually having to subtract five and one fourth from a whole number six. So off to the side, I kind of drew six squares. And right now they want me to subtract five and one fourth from them. So I'm used to subtracting whole numbers, so I'm gonna go ahead and subtract or cross out five of these squares because six minus five is easy to do. Well, this is where we have a problem. We have a problem because our last square represents one right now. And I actually need to subtract one fourth from one. In order to do that, my square has to be divided into fourths, and then I can actually cross out one fourth of those sections. So, what am I looking at? I'm actually looking at my final answer. My difference is going to be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, not one. So my answer should be three fourths. How do I do this numerically? Well, let's take a look at the problem that we have. And I'm actually gonna make some space for us because we're gonna understand really quickly that sometimes we can't subtract from zero. What do I mean by that? Well, we have a whole number and right next to this whole number, what you don't see is an invisible fraction, a fraction of zero fourths. Well, we've learned time and time again that if I subtract one from zero, it actually gives me a negative one. Well, I'm not teaching negative integers in fifth grade this year. You'll probably see more of that in sixth grade and seventh grade. So I'm gonna show you how we borrow and regroup. We're gonna actually mark out the six, which is our whole number. And when we mark it out, we're borrowing one from it. So six minus one is five. Somehow, somewhere, we have an invisible whole number floating in space because five plus one is six. So how do we write this one whole number as a fraction to make it easier to subtract? Well, remember when I said that when we add or subtract, we have to have common denominators? Well, our denominator right now is a four. So four over four or four divided by four is one. So I'm actually going to be regrouping four fourths to this fraction. There's a lot going on right now next to my numbers and I don't wanna get confused so I'm gonna stop for a second and rewrite what I see. I know that my whole number is now a five because I borrowed from it. And when I regrouped my denominator, I now have a fraction of four fourths right beside my five because zero fourths plus four fourths is four fourths. And nothing ever changed from the subtraction fraction below. So now that it's rewritten nice and neat and I can easily see my two mixed numbers, I can go ahead and subtract four fourths minus one fourth is three fourths and five minus five is zero. So just like my visual model stated, my answer is three fourths. Now, this is one way we have to regroup our fractions. 12 and 1 ninths has a denominator of a nine. And seven and one third has a denominator of a three. 
So I'm gonna continue on with the steps that I've already been practicing. I'm gonna rename my denominators so that they're like or common denominators. Well, I know that right away, three can go into nine. So nine will actually become my new denominator. In this first fraction, the nine never even changed. So that means if my denominator doesn't change, my numerator doesn't change either. And so I'm just gonna also rewrite my whole number. Now in this second fraction, I multiplied three by three to get the new denominator of a nine. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm gonna rename my numerator one times three is three and go ahead and bring my whole number over so that I don't forget about it. So I'm gonna stop for a second. This is our new subtraction problem. 12 and 1 ninths minus seven and 3 ninths. Can you see the problem? Can you figure out what could be a roadblock right now for me subtracting? I hope you found it. So right now, I'm realizing that when I subtract, I'm gonna try to take three from one. Well, if I subtract three from one, I end up with a negative two. And again, we're not working with negative numbers in fifth grade. So I wanna make sure that my number is a positive one. So in order to do this, you guessed it, I've gotta borrow and regroup. What this means is that I'm going to go ahead and borrow from my 12 and make it an 11. Now that one whole number that I borrowed, remember I'm going to regroup as a fraction. So regrouping as a fraction means I'm gonna notice my denominator of a nine. And I'm gonna use the nine to create a whole number. Well, I know that nine ninths equals one one whole. So I'm going to add that to one ninths. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Don't worry. This is where I often stop, take a deep breath and rewrite what I see. Just go ahead and follow your steps. So on this top fraction, I know that my whole number is an 11. So I'm going to write that down before I forget. The second step that I have not written down are my fractions. I've got 1 ninth plus 9 ninths, and I'm having to add them together because there's an addition symbol. This equals 10 ninths. You definitely should get an improper fraction. We want that. This is going to allow us to subtract. Now I never even used this second fraction yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and just line up my place values to make it easier to subtract. That looks a lot better and a lot ne neater for me to be able to work with. So 10 ninths minus three ninths is seven ninths. 11 minus seven is four. This fraction or mixed number is already in simplest form, so I'm done. This is why we often use grid paper, because look how many steps I had to do in order to figure this problem out. I first had to rename my denominators. Then I had to borrow and regroup my fractions. And after I was able to borrow and regroup my fractions, I then was able to subtract. Now, I wanna show you something that you could also do, but might be a little bit more challenging. And I'm still gonna use the fraction 12 and 1 ninths minus seven and 3 ninths. Finding the common denominator is always first. So now that they're both in common denominators, some of you might like to work with improper fractions in order to do this step. 
If you don't favor borrowing and regrouping, this could be an easier way for you or an easier strategy. But remember, it's important to know how to do both. To rename a mixed number into an improper fraction, we multiply the denominators by the whole number, and then we add the numerator. I would pause this video for a quick second. Talk to yourself over and over and over again repeatedly on how to rename a mixed number to an improper. This will help you out in the long run. So it kind of goes like a wheel or a circle. We're going to start off at the denominator, which is a 9. And when I times it by 12 and add 1 to it, it equals 109 over the denominator that stays the same. So 12 times 9 is 108. I added 1 to it, which gave me the 109. Same thing with the second fraction. 9 times 7 is 63. And when I add 3 to it, I get a new numerator of 66. As you can tell, my improper fractions are easier to subtract because my first fraction, 109, is greater than 66. So I'm gonna just go ahead and subtract. 109 minus 66 is 43. Denominator stays the same. When you get 43 ninths, it's important to rename so that it is an improper fraction. So we do this by dividing 43 by nine. And I'm gonna actually move up here where I have some more space. Nine can be divided into 43 four times. And when I subtract 36 from 43, I get a remainder of seven. That means that 43 ninths is equal to four and seven ninths. This is the same answer that we got after we borrowed and regrouped our fractions or mixed numbers. Either strategy is used. Either strategy works. Just be sure to pick one that's comfortable for you. Now, if you have some playing cards or dice at home, practice rolling and creating some fractions. Practice adding and subtracting them. You probably will end up with a subtraction problem that requires you to borrow and regroup. Good luck.